Hi, my name is Sebastian and in this video I want to show you how to effectively execute tests in Quarkus applications. Because Quarkus can help us a lot here, especially with the dev mode, and we'll see how to effectively run tests in different scopes. What I have here is a Quarkus project that of course you can check out on GitHub, that's my coffee shop project, that runs Quarkus in a recent version, so that's important. I will show certain features that are um, only there since uh, 3.2. And with this, what we have, well, we have a, a project with a few different tests. So there are different ways to execute these tests. And of course, if you know Quarkus, you know the dev mode. And this is what I want to show you in order to execute these tests effectively. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run Quarkus colon dev that we know. I start my Quarkus dev mode that, of course, compiles everything and then runs my application here on the local host 8080. So this is running and you probably know about the continuous testing feature since Quarkus 2. So what I typically do, I press O for toggling the test output with H. You can see some help here what you can do and then resume the testing with R. So I press O and R to run all of the tests. So this starts the continuous testing mode, but I'm not that interested actually in the continuous feature. I'm more interested in the feature of running them really effectively because you hear my keyboard. If I press R, then it runs them again. It runs them again. And here you see that executes very quickly. And that is even faster than running my tests in the IDE because here you heard the keystroke before. It takes a few seconds to spin that up. And in total, it takes like three uh, seconds or so for the overall turnaround time. And in the Quarkus test, that is just much faster. So what I'm running here are plain JUnit tests and I execute them with the Quarkus dev mode in the continuous testing feature. This is already very helpful. I can run my test really quickly. I can rerun them by pressing R. Now, this runs only the tests that are in the Maven convention called Surefire tests that are test classes that end with TEST or start with TEST. So in the Maven convention, we can define integration tests, ITs, classes that end with IT for integration test. And out of the box, they won't be executed when I do a Maven build, like a Maven package. And this is the same in the Quarkus dev mode. So this convention has been taken there as well, which is why the smoke IT is not being executed. So here I can have a look in the list. It's not there. Only these TEST classes, the test classes here, are executed. So that's that. If I would like to execute this, well, I have a few options. For example, I could say probably you know about that flag. I could set a system property Quarkus test exclude pattern because there is an exclude pattern that is set to something like this and I can set this to empty. So then nothing is excluded. The ITs are excluded per default and if I don't exclude them, I start everything again with O and R. Now we see that I have more tests. Now I have 18 tests. And if I look at the list somewhere here, it should say, okay, the smoke IT is now included. Why is this uh, included? Well, that is up to you how you would like to define your scopes. Why do I, what I do quite often is I use these ITs as a separate test scope that is not executed in the package, especially for something like a smoke test here that connects to the system already via HTTP. And that of course requires that the system is running. So this really makes sense in a CI CD pipeline or here in my Quarkus dev mode. Now, if I would like to do this, I reset it again because it's a little bit cumbersome to set this flag each and every time to reset and restart my dev mode. But now what you can do in a recent Quarkus version, you can actually set these patterns on the fly. How this works is you go to the console by pressing colon. So there is a Quarkus terminal here. And this is a terminal that you can use similar to, well, any other terminal. And let's have a look what is available there. There is a command called test. And you can um, basically control the patterns and tags. What that is, I'll show a little bit later to include and exclude things here. OK, so how this works, I can on the fly set test pattern exclude and the exclude pattern is already set. So I could you know, set this to something here or I just leave it empty. And now nothing is excluded. And if I restart everything here, pressing R, now it runs my 18 tests 
I can unset this again by going with test pattern. I can actually use here the history as well. Exclude, set the exclude pattern to just exclude everything with IT. And then go back with quit, I press R and then see, we see that now 15 tests have been executed and without the IT again. So we can dynamically set that. Of course, now this will be a little bit cumbersome as well to just type it each and every time. So the advantage is that we don't um, need, need to restart the dev mode, but typing this is a little bit cumbersome. So luckily we can use aliases that work very similarly to shell aliases. So if I set an alias, I can use this alias command to say, for example, well, please run all tests. I set this to all and then I run this command test exclude um, test pattern exclude to empty. And then I can uh, add two options R and D for R for run uh, it and, uh, um, and immediately switch to the dev mode again. So if I now press all, then it goes back here and runs all 18 tests. And now I can have similar thing here, alias, let's call this unit test. It's not really unit test, but you get the point pattern, exclude, set this to this IT, set these options. And now I can run this unit here as well. And now we have the 15 tests again. Okay. And then the mode is switched. If I run it now, I have, well, what is now the, the latest pattern. Okay. So that's already better. I can now go to the command line and say, okay, all, and then runs all tests. And there's even a better way. So also what is possible since Quark is 3.2 is that I can define aliases that have a single character, a single letter or a digit. So for example, if I say alias A, I have the same thing like here, A for all, and alias U, for example, if I define some characters quit that are not already taken here in well in this dev mode then you see here under user defined aliases a test pattern and so on and so forth and now i can press just a single character without switching to the terminal i can now say a please run everything and run it again with r run it again run it again or u for the unit test now it's 15 and run it again with r run it again, run it again, and you get the point. Now I can set up a mode in which I can very quickly switch with these patterns. So I say, okay, which test do you actually want to run? And you can have this, of course, by class name or by package name, and you can come up with some uh, complex uh, structures here. You can also set this to the digits, then you have more available and so on and so forth. And you can document this with some notes, which test to run. So this is already very helpful because then we can very quickly switch which type of test we would like to execute without waiting and also without restarting our development mode or our development session. This is really helpful and it very much reduces the turnaround time and you can code with flow. So that's that. But also there's another thing I want to show you that are tags to unit tags. And for this, we actually run a separate project that is a system test project, part of my coffee shop here. What that is, well, it has system tests that connect to my application and while well, do functional testing. That is in a separate project, Coffee Shop ST. This one is just a plain Java project, but I've shown this in a previous video. There is a workaround that it can use. It's a little bit of a hack, but I would say locally it makes a lot of sense because it's pragmatic. You can actually add Quarkus with the Quarkus Maven plugin, even though this is not a Quarkus application, which is kind of funny. So I set this to a separate Maven profile and then it just adds the Maven plugin and it doesn't really start an application because there's nothing to start, but it works. I can run the tests. So how this works is Maven, I set the profile here and then of course Quark is dev. So then it has this system test project here. So there's basically almost nothing there. And of course I can run my tests here. So I press O and then I press R to run all of the tests. Now what happens is that all of the system tests run. I have some system tests that use the API, the HTTP API, and as you can see, also UI tests that go against the website. Now, what I'm gonna show you makes even more sense because we really notice a big difference in test time. So now the whole thing runs 15 seconds, which is very long. So this is too long for me to wait if I'm coding on some feature and rerun it, rerun it, it takes too long. So 
what can we do here? Well, first of all, I could exclude some tests again. So I can say, well, exclude all of the UI tests, for instance, if I don't want to have them right now. The way how I set this up typically is I use a naming structure, something like UI test. So all of my system tests are typically just TEST. But if I call it in a separate way, I can use this as a separate pattern. I could also define an IT, whatever you want here. But then there's also another notation. Let's do this first. I set um, this exclude pattern. So let's have a look at the aliases. Is there something that I can use? No, I have to uh, do this differently. So I now call this one uh, test pattern exclude UI test. And I do this for that. This should work and I press one and this should now run only my API tests. But you see it's still running. It's still running. Why? Because there is one API test that is kind of slow. So the whole thing took nine seconds still, even without the UI tests. Why? Because there's one test that has, well, a basically more sophisticated domain checking. That is this one here. If I run this in my IDE individually, you will see this. What it does, it actually goes to my coffee shop and orders a coffee. And then there is a communication going on from the coffee shop to a second system that is called barista and they communicate asynchronously and that just takes you know sometimes six seconds sometimes nine seconds so quite a while and this is not something that is the fault of my test um, scenario this is just the domain itself it just takes long now what we can do we can use junit tags so this is part of the junit api and i can define a tag that i call slow and this slow is another conven convention in the Quarkus world. I can use the slow tag to just, well, define it as a slow test. And now if I run everything, it says, okay, nine tests and they run really, really quickly. And this is now just the API test scope without the slow test. So what happens, you can use the tags here as well. And per default, this works very similarly tags there is an exclude tag for the slow tag so this is per default this is excluded if i set this to empty and then i rerun everything now you see it takes longer it's still running and now it runs all of them again so what you can do per default the slow tags are well ignored or excluded in the quarkus dev so if i set this tag here then this is excluded and now i have my quick tests again okay and of course, now if we put everything together, we now can go back to the command line and define a few more aliases that now control these different things. So what I would like to think of is to have a local development workflow in which I can just code and then quickly with one single keystroke, I can, cha uh, I can uh, change and you know define what I would like to test. So say, okay, now run all of the quick tests, now run the UI tests, now run everything, including the slow tests. I go to uh, fetch a coffee and you, know, you get the idea without restarting my development mode. This works here. How I can do this is basically saying, now I overwrite this, this already works, but I want to be a little bit more specific. I want to say, okay, please now exclude, you know, for example, this, let's say one should be fast. So let's say test pattern. There is a few ways that you also have to keep in mind. I have exclude and include. They work basically like a black and white list. And what it can do, well, um, you could combine them, but then you need to uh, take care that they still make sense because they're basically mutually exclusive. So what I would like to do uh, with pattern include, set the include pattern to empty, like the exclude pattern before, and then you can chain commands with and and, of course, like that's in a regular shell. And then what I would like to do is also to set the test um, test tags exclude slow. So I reset this to what it was per default and then exclude the UI tests. The reason why I write this that in a, such a cumbersome way is that then I can use different um, keys one after another and they're basically distinct. They're mutually exclusive what I can execute. So I do this for number one and then number two should be, let's say, um, only the UI tests. So test um, or maybe everything with UI tests but not the slow test. So um, test exclude slow still but don't exclude the UI tests, set the include also to empty. So basically we run all of the tests ex uh, except the very, very slow ones and three should be run everything. So then we say, okay, set all of the 
exclude to empty. So don't exclude the slow tests and ex um, set this to this. Okay, now let's have a look at that. I now have a few more aliases and I can say one, two, three runs different versions. If I press one, then it runs the very quick version. I can run this again with R, run it again, run it again, it's very fast. Number two should run the UI tests, but not the very slow tests. So it excludes the slow tag. And now after a few seconds, maybe six seconds around or something like this, it should um, finish all of the UI tests. Okay, it was actually 10 seconds, a little bit slower. But now if I press three, now it should run everything, including my longer running API tests. I expect something like 15 to 18 seconds. Now, this is a long time. Typically what I would do, I start this and then I grab some coffee and then I wait for it. And then ultimately that's finished. Of course, you don't want to run this all the time. So now you see while I'm talking, this, this takes a while. So it really makes sense to switch this on the fly. And with this, I can have a setup that is really, really efficient to use. Now, this uh, works thanks to all of the aliases. Let's have a look. Okay, this is actually a long time. I think they get slower over time, the UI test. But you see the point if I switch this again to one, I can run it again, run it again. I show this with the fast one so it doesn't take so long. And you see the point here. Okay, so this works because we put a few features together. We use the continuous testing approach here. We use specific patterns and tags with the exclude and include. And we use aliases in the command line here to quickly switch it. And we use the aliases with a single letter or digit to be able to switch them quickly, which works here, as you've seen with the user defined aliases. So that's that. Good news here is also you don't have to remember them or type this all over again because all of these things are stored under a Quarkus in your home directory console aliases. So here you can see that. So luckily they're still available. If we restart everything, I don't have to, you know, redefine these things. I say toggle test output, set this to one to the very quick one, and then all of my tests run. If I go to my command line, I see in the aliases that they are still there. So this works and that's very helpful. With this approach, I claim you have a very, very efficient way to execute everything here. Now, one thing with the pattern, if you would, for some reason, for example, in your CI CD system, would like to run this directly on the command line with Maven, this also works. You probably know about the dash T test uh, one, which, uh, with which you can uh, run individual tests or with the patterns, this works, or there's also a way to run uh, specific groups or to exclude groups. There is dash D excluded groups. So if I say run everything except the slow uh, tests here, I can exclude them here in the same way like uh, like I can exclude a class or test name patterns. So this also works uh, in case you would like to use the same feature. This reuses the tags, the JUnit test tags, then here as well. And this one slow test has not been executed. So this is a way to define a different sort of scopes and different dimensions. Now we see that you basically have multiple dimensions here uh, that you can define in your test setup. So we have the patterns with typically the class names. I use these to have different scopes of tests. We can say, okay, this one is very slow exceptionally, then give it a different dimension with the tags. Of course, you can mix up and match as um, well complexly as you, as you would like. So you can set this up in a very uh, complex way, uh, but basically, this is my recommendation to use a combination of these and to be able to quickly switch and to have very fast test turnaround times. And with the dev mode, this really works. That's uh, why I'm such a big fan of Quarkus and the dev mode specifically to set this up. Now, if you're interested in the topic of efficiently working with Quarkus and testing with Quarkus, I have video courses on these topics linked down below in the description. And also, if you found this helpful, I would really appreciate if you liked the video and you might also subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of videos on these topics. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.